Alrighty, hi everyone. We are at nine weeks and three days pregnant. And I was gonna sit down and do like a proper video, but I just had to talk to you guys because I am cooking plain rice <coughs> and it smells like cow poop. I've checked everything else in the kitchen to check that it's not something else and that there's something actually wrong. And I swear to you, this is white rice that I like rinsed first, put in the rice cooker, and it smells like cow poop. Honestly, I do. Oh, wow. Like, I definitely noticed that my sense of smell has been stronger. But this is the first time that I've actually had something that should be, like, innocuous. Like, just not an issue that smells absolutely horrific. <laughs> and I got the white rice because I felt like I was struggling to, like chew and properly process the brown rice like um with my nausea and exhaustion getting worse throughout the day once i get to the evening i feel like i would need very like easy to eat things Ooh, hold on it's boiling over sorry that was just the noodles that i'm cooking to <laughs> replace my rice this evening um yeah i got white rice to just make it a bit easier on myself and it smells like cow poop this is like shocking to me. Like I kind of expected it that maybe that would happen with like cheese or meat or stuff like that. That already has kind of a strong smell that could end up smelling weird. But I did not have white rice smells like cow poop on my bingo card for this pregnancy. <laughs> anyway, I'll talk to you guys again some more in a bit. But yeah, the um the food smells disgusting. Symptom. That's a new one. <laughs> Alrighty, hi everyone. I am 10 weeks today. I've decided this is a nine and 10 weeks combined little vlog because I've been busy in the last week. But anyway, today is my first midwife's appointment. Um, Josh is gonna be coming with me. We're gonna be heading out really, really soon. Um, and I realized I have no idea what happens at a midwife's appointment. I said to him yesterday, I was like, Josh, do you think the midwife's gonna like feel my tum tum? And he was like, I, I, I think so. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what else she's going to do. <laughs> this is going to be a learning experience for both of us. Cause I really, I really have no idea. Um, I also need to ask her today about booking my ultrasound for like 12 or 13 weeks. So that'll be in a few weeks time, obviously, so that we can see what's happening with that. And then, yeah, with how tired I've been feeling and the fact that my diet hasn't been able to include any meat recently um because i just can't stomach it um i'm thinking i will also ask about getting my iron levels checked just to see how all of that's doing but yeah that's kind of it i'm not sure what else she's going to be asking about or like checking for or whatever so anyway i'll let you guys know afterwards how it has actually gone and yeah fingers crossed everything is looking good well see you soon bye all right hi everyone Oh, I am at 10 weeks and two days today. So um, you would have just seen me, sorry, my hair, fixing, fixing. You would have just seen me saying that I was about to go to my midwife's appointment. Um, so give a little update on that. And then just generally like how I'm doing at 10 weeks and two days. So the appointment went really well. Um, my husband and I actually made up like a little bingo card on the way. Cause we were both like, I don't know what they ask or talk about or whatever. Um, most of it wasn't covered off because it was just like very kind of light touch. And I think that, um, my midwife could see that like we were onto it with everything. So there was, there was not too much to check off. Um, it was sort of the main stuff around food safety. She lectured me a little bit because I said how I wasn't having like raw fish sushi because I knew I wasn't meant to have raw fish. And she said that if, if I don't know when the rice was cooked, then I shouldn't be having any sushi. So I was like, okay. But I also kind of leftovers, which was kind of doing my head in a bit because um, she was like, you can make sushi at home. And I'm like, yeah, but I can't have leftovers. She was like, no, you can't. So I'm like, oh, it's just been oh, honestly with the nausea, like, and the exhaustion. Everything is so draining to do with food. And I have such limited energy anyway that I, if I'm spending more than like five or ten minutes making something, I need to have leftovers from it or everything just ends up being too draining. And so... Sushi bowls is like 
20 to 30 minutes and to only get one meal out of it. I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> so yeah, had to rethink things um, a little bit there. And then we booked my first ultrasound for, I'll be almost 14 weeks by the time I get it. So they meant to do sort of 12 to 13 weeks, but I'll be almost 14. And so that's really exciting. I feel like it's a long time to wait, um, but I'm also like, yeah, the days seem to be going faster now. You know, I feel like early on, I was remembering to tick off like every day. I was updating on my little whiteboard when I was like, <laughs> you know, five weeks and six days, and then six weeks, and then six weeks and one day, and then six weeks and two days. Um, and I updated for nine weeks and then I didn't update till 10 weeks. So like, I, I just feel like it's going a lot faster now. So hopefully it doesn't feel like too long. And then it'll be my next midwife's appointment the week after that. So then aiming for an appointment every sort of four ish weeks, um, up until we go. Um, the main thing she did want to talk to me about was that I should contact <laughs> the, um, like the health service and the midwives and everything. Um, in Germany before like before we go I think a lot of the stuff with Germany I've kind of gone like obviously we need to book our accommodation for when we get there and we need to book our flights um, and we need to have our health insurance sorted and all of that but everything else I just kind of haven't been able to think about because there is so much to sort here <laughs> I kind of can't think about the future too much and I think also with my poor little brain at the moment um it's just really draining to try and focus on the stuff here focus on my job I need to be sleeping like 11 hours a day and I still feel pretty crappy most days and then to also then think about what I need to be doing when I'm in a new country is like it's too much but the fact that she said that it's really important I'm like okay so um this week I'm gonna send an email off to the main sort of thing and just outline when we're planning on arriving what our situation is and so what I think that we'll need um luckily they have really good information um on the websites there as to like what they would expect you to be doing at what time like which classes and what's provided free of charge and what you need to have through your health insurance um <laughs> the fun thing being that I can't go onto the German health insurance system because I'm not going into a job and neither is my husband. So we will be going with private health insurance, but um, the private health insurance that we can access is essentially like private travel insurance. Um, so it means that all of my maternity care we will be paying for out of pocket, which is like expensive, but also not like compared to the US paying out of pocket to have a child, nowhere near that, like nowhere near. Um, I might be eating my words on that, but, um, <laughs> as my midwife said, she was, she's, she's a bit more kind of old fashioned. So she actually doesn't normally take on patients anymore. She's the coordinator for the community midwife services at one of the hospitals here. But because I couldn't get a independent midwife, because generally they want to like see people, care for them through their pregnancy, care for them through their birth and then postpartum. But I'm not going to be doing that. It's a bit awkward for them with their like workload and caseload and everything. So I had to go to community midwives and then they're like, well, if you're not giving birth here, we'll put you with this coordinator lady, coordinate, a coordin coordinator lady. I couldn't say that yesterday either. Oh, so it means she's really experienced. She just doesn't normally have patience because she just coordinates everything. And I assume that she's like the sounding board for like everyone else, which is awesome because it means she's super experienced and she's super great. But she was saying, what was she saying? What was this related to? This is going to be me for the next six months, by the way. Um, she was saying about how we, oh yes, her philosophy is that every pregnancy has a hiccup. It took us like 16 months to get pregnant, so that was our hiccup. So she said, from here on out, we've ordered you a no complication, smooth sailing pregnancy. So you will be fine. So I'm like, great. So <laughs> I am just going to lean into that and believe that with all that I have. And to be honest, if I'm updating on how I'm feeling, everything's kind of going like clockwork. Everything is kind of going how it should. So, um... I feel like I should start from head to toe to kind of go with how I'm feeling. So head, um, I'm really tired, but in the last few days at 10 weeks, as I feel 
the placenta is kind of taking over and it's less of my body doing everything and it's more based on the placenta, I feel like I'm slightly less tired. I feel like my brain fog has decreased. Like I remembered this morning as I was waking up that I hadn't um, paid my therapist and I saw my therapist like almost a month ago and I realized I hadn't paid my therapist. Um, <laughs> so I sent that money through this morning. So I feel like my brain is starting to come back online a bit, like the brain fog is lifting a little bit. Um, I have been having really dry lips, which is a thing that apparently happens. Um, what else? Um, these gals <laughs> are still fairly large. I'm still fitting into my normal bras, but I'm actually wearing just like a soft, comfy bra today. And I'm going to end up doing that more and more, I think. I do have one like proper underwire bra that is like a size bigger it's like a slightly different brand you know how bras always just like fit totally different so anyway if it feels like it's kind of a size bigger I have that to grow into um if I need to and then once I'm not working <laughs> once I have third trimester um I am just going to be in comfy bras let's be honest I'm not going to be doing underwires and stuff at that point that is that is not on the cards nausea nausea has changed a little bit over the last few days it Got a bit worse for a couple of days, but then literally in the last day, I think it's changing and I think it's easing. And I'm also thinking that that's the case because my temperature has come down. So what happens in the first trimester is that your temperature is higher than your baseline because of all the progesterone that your body is producing. And then once the placenta kind of takes over a bit and starts to come online and then the follicle that released the egg that's now the baby right now, well, the fetus, that, that starts to calm down. Um, less progesterone in my body, so my temperature starts to come down. So it had been coming down a little bit over the last week. And then yesterday it was below baseline by 0.13. This is according to my, to my Apple Watch. And then today it was below baseline by 0.26. So I'm thinking that now 10 weeks placenta is starting to, to really shift into gear and take over and doing a really good job, which is really exciting. So I think that I'm going to be feeling better soon. Um, I haven't had any bleeding, which is super awesome. Um, so no need to be concerned there. Um, I am experiencing more discharge, which is also very common. <laughs> there have been a couple of times where I'm like, I'm going to have to like change my underwear today or something because this is like a lot. Um, so I'm, I, I'm not sure there. I think maybe that's it. Maybe I end up having to change my underwear more frequently to just feel like slightly fresher. Um, that's probably the most eco-friendly way to do that. I don't really want to go back to like the liners and stuff that you just throw in the trash. That doesn't seem to be right. Um, but yeah, there was, <laughs> there've been a couple of oh, moments. Um, what else is going on? Yeah, I've had some kind of weirdness with my pelvis a little bit, but I think that that's also because I'm back getting chiropractic care that I wasn't getting for a bit there. And so I think that it's sort of a, everything's kind of shifting and changing a little bit anyway. I'm starting to get the round ligament pain. Let me show you guys actually, because <laughs> when I went in for my midwife's appointment, all of the other women in the waiting room, they were like, hold on, let me grab my dog's toy. They were there with their like full bellies and they're like standing and they're like, Whoo. and I'm there and I'm like, here it is. That's... See that? That's, that's the bump. That is the bump right there. So yeah, anyway, I have been having some kind of round ligament pains here. I've been really trying to do, you know, like the, the cat cows and everything and also the side to side to just kind of help open up all of this. I am lucky though because I am above average height and I have a long torso, shorter legs. So I'm hoping that because I've got a bit more room in here that everything kind of stays a bit more comfy as we progress. Um, but yeah, that's most of what's going on here. So I'm, you can probably tell I'm feeling pretty happy today because I was really able to get a lot of good work done yesterday. It's been a struggle keeping up with my job at the moment because I'm just so exhausted and the brain fog has been a struggle and the undiagnosed ADHD is still kicking my butt. So, like I said, 10 weeks in two days. I think that everything's progressing like clockwork and that it means that I'll be feeling a lot more kind of back to normal um, in a couple of weeks, which is just, oh, I really hope that's the case. That would just be 
amazing. That would be so amazing. And now I just feel so motivated to get everything done that we need to get done in the house because when you're in a position and it really does feel so debilitating, when you're in a position where you just have nothing more to draw on and you cannot do more, it's it just sucks so bad. So yeah, really looking forward to having more energy. I think that that's how it's going to go. I think that that's how I'm starting to feel. And then, yeah, hopefully some more videos that aren't just pregnancy updates. That is all I've been able to keep up with recently because it is just so, so tough and so draining. And I know that my edits are not very good because I'm basically just throwing the videos together and going, here's a video. There it is. Go for it. Um, <laughs> so keeping up with that, getting our house sold, going to update you guys on what our plans are and um, some stuff about, you know, the move, the fact that we're leaving New Zealand, some stuff related to minimalism about my pregnancy, because I've also been thinking about that as well. Ooh, it's just so much fun. So anyway, we're getting into it. It's going to be good. Oh, I can't wait for almost 14 weeks when we finally have our ultrasound. So yeah, um, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for following along. Um, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.